Last week we walked through a simple but pretty obviously broken approach to object matching. We were only checking for a single key value pair, which is really not very useful since you could have two wildly different objects that happen to share that one pair and would thus produce a false positive. Today we're going to produce a more robust algorithm that will help us match objects, although this will only match objects that have a single level. If you're working with nested objects, things get really thorny, and I'm afraid the solution is outside the scope of a simple quick hits tutorial. It's important to note that what we're really checking for here is not whether these two objects are the same object. The way JavaScript works, they never will be, unless the second is a variable referencing the first. What we are really checking is if two different objects have identical properties. With that in mind, we're going to need objects. Note that user3 is a duplicate of user1, but is not a reference. We're using the spread operator to create an entirely new object. This is good. Now that we've got an object that is definitely different, and one that's identical, we can check our functionality against those two. Speaking of our function, we should be able to keep it relatively straightforward. We're just going to iterate through object1's properties and compare them against object2's properties. We can do that with object.keys, which we've used before in JS Quick Hits but never actually covered. I might have to fix that. Anyway, it gives us an array of the object's keys, ignoring prototypal keys. So if we run it on user1, we're going to get an array with name, age, and kids in it. We can then loop over that array to check the values of each key on both objects to make sure they match. Here's the code. As you can see, the first thing we're doing is making sure the two objects are, well, objects. Remember that arrays in JavaScript are also objects, so if you want to reject those, you'll need to detect them. The easiest way to do that is to just check for obj1.length and obj2.length, since arrays have a length property and standard objects don't. We're not doing that, though, because this function will actually work properly with arrays, so why not let it? The next thing we do is use object.keys to get object1's keys. We then immediately iterate over the array of keys with a simple for each. From here it's easy. We just check each key's value for object 1 against each key's value for object 2. If object 2 doesn't have a given key, that's going to be a false, and if it does have the same key, if the values don't match, then that'll be a false as well. It's simple and straightforward and should work with any single level object you throw at it. So let's test it. Save that. Take a look. We get our error, and then we get false, false. That's not good. Aha! I spelled objects incorrectly. Try that again. There we go. False and true as expected. Always helps to spell your variable names correctly. And just to prove that this works with arrays, Save that. And there you go. We're getting the expected responses based on what we feed the function. This isn't bulletproof, there are probably edge cases we need to worry about, but for what we're trying to accomplish here, it's pretty solid. That's about it for this week. Catch you next time.